On Monday, fourth grade students at our Redeemer Lutheran School were handed a group assignment in English class. The question, give three good reasons for slavery and three bad reasons. It's highly offensive and insensitive. I, I was in shock. I couldn't believe that they had sent something like that home. Tramika Brown Berry is the mother of a nine year old boy in that class. Not only just my son was in an awful position, but also the students who weren't black because it's that sort of mentality of not being able to see from, from another's perspective and only seeing through your lens. That's what's dangerous. That's what keeps racism going. School principal Jim Van Dellen declined to speak with us on camera, but admits the assignment was out of line. In a letter sent home to parents and students Tuesday, Van Dellen says the purpose of the assignment was not in any way to have students argue that any slavery is acceptable. He says the assignment is no longer part of the curriculum, something Van Dellen says was intended to spark debate in class. And for it to be a Christian school, they could have said something like, what are three good things that we can do to prevent slavery from happening? The principal is vowing to better communicate sensitive subjects being discussed in class with parents before presenting it to students. Brownberry says this homework should be a lesson to us all and the reason she posted it online. Speak up. Tell your story, voice your opinion, because that is how you go about change. And that's what I was trying to model for my son. Cherie, the mother of an eighth grader here at Mason Middle School, says she initially did not believe her 13 year old son. She said she thought maybe he was mistaken and he took the comment about lynching out of context. So she called the teacher directly who confirmed exactly what she said tonight. According to that mother, to mother, Tanisha A.G. Bell, her son's social studies teacher said, quote, if you don't get back on task, your friends are going to form an angry mob and lynch you. End quote. The mother says it happened during the first week of December last year, but her son did not tell her about it until a week later because he thought he might get in trouble for talking back and telling his teacher what she said was racist. A.G. Bell says she went immediately to the superintendent. For her not to understand that the words that she said were a direct pull from what has been, what, is, what was a practice in the United States, it's unacceptable. So she shouldn't be in the classroom. She shouldn't be in the classroom at all. Um, and I'm not saying she should never go back to the classroom, but I think that until she can demonstrate that she understands what the impact of the language that she used and what she did can ha has, has had on my son, has had on his peers, and is having on our community, then she doesn't need to be in the classroom. The teacher was not removed, but Mason City Schools did say this in a statement. Sometimes we mess up. Clearly, that was the case here. And even though this teacher did not set out to hurt a child, clearly that happened too. It was amazing that this young black man was brave enough to confront his teacher when the incident happened. It goes on to say, as a district, we want to be very clear. We are not okay normalizing racial slurs. Anyone who does so faces disciplinary action. Mason City School says the teacher has been with the district since 2002. She has not been suspended, but will receive training for her actions. Reporting live tonight in Mason, Emily Wood, WLWT News 5. All right. H&M is apologizing after one of their ads created a lot of backlash on social media. An image of a black child modeling a sweatshirt with a coolest monkey in the jungle slogan is being called racist. The image appeared on the British version of the Swedish retailer's online store. The Stockholm-based clothing giant issued an apology Monday morning saying, this image has now been removed from all H&M channels and we apologize to anyone this may have offended. There are calls to boycott clothing giant H&M after it advertised a black child in a hoodie with the words coolest monkey in the jungle. H&M has now taken down the image and apologized. However, that has not stopped a large row, the brand now being labeled as racist. Marketing fail. H&M puts a black child in a hoodie that reads, I'm the coolest monkey in the jungle, and the white child is the survival expert. And now folks are pretending like they don't know the black children have long been racially characterized as monkeys. The H&M is just irony. I highly doubt they were like, let's put the monkey hoodie on the baby, like y'all making it seem. There's a white supremacist who works for H&M. 
who thought it was funny to make a black boy model a hoodie that said coolest monkey in the jungle. H&M is not an American company. Non-native brands do not have to be familiar with USA's or other countries' historical conflicts. No one has to do background research for advertising a simple hoodie. Y'all can feel how y'all feel about the H&M hoodie situation. I thought the hoodie was cute. Sue me. They've got a little black boy in a monkey hoodie. Of course it's offensive, but it's so obvious. I'm hysterical over the lack of awareness by H&M. We discuss whether the ad is racially insensitive with Luke Gittos, a law editor of Spiked magazine, and Remy Fadari from Models of Diversity. The whole issue is with this advertising campaign. It's an advertising campaign that has to, it's international, it's an international campaign and it's so obvious that if you're going to use a connotation like monkey, whether a child is a monkey and you're going to choose a black child for the campaign and a white child as a survivor of the jungle, that it's not going to have connotations. It's ridiculous to think it's not going to have any connotations whatsoever. I think it's a really sad day. I think what has happened is the word monkey has been used because this boy is a child and the word monkey is used to describe children of all races because they're cheeky and mischievous and you can see this across children's clothes for, for children of all races and this was part of a jungle themed clothing line the idea that this was somehow racially malevolent i think is utterly ludicrous i'm so disappointed by this campaign i've seen what h&m do they always use a mix of models but this is really ill not uh, you know it's ill time to say the least is what this campaign is it's really badly thought out by a board of white directors because even if it was even if there's that opinion that it's just like badly thought and it might have been parents that are negatively thinking about this you cannot deny the connotations that it held I, I don't think this has that connotation for the vast majority of people the vast majority of people think this is a perfectly innocent campaign involving children of all races involved in the that's jungle true. I think it's really sad when Adults' preconceptions uh, about racism and race get read into childhood interactions. I think that is potentially extremely corrosive. If this kind of thinking gets into our school environment, for example, what are we going to end up saying? That black children can't be involved in games that might involve jungle animals? Children are going to get involved in games that involve jungle animals, but if you're going to specifically choose a campaign where the black child is chosen as the monkey and the white child is chosen as the jungle survivor in a climate of racial tension you know it's going to have connotations especially for their parents i was bullied by a whole class um, called a monkey by the by a whole class of, when i was going into a class and then and and it really had an effect and if that's going to have an effect on me that's going to have an effect on generations to come because you're the parent of that child so you can't get away from that the strongest way we can deal with this is by moving children beyond race that should be the goal for everyone in society is making children not think about their race that's the way we should be proceeding but what this thinking does is that it reads into people's motivations a racist and malign motivation and the previous speaker just did exactly that they said well there's a white board of people this must be a racist thing this must be racial why can't it simply be that this is a child a child who is black or white who cares it doesn't matter Florida Gulf Coast University offering a course this semester called White Racism. Reaction has been swift and severe. So let's bring in now Ted Thornhill. He's assistant professor of sociology at the school who is teaching the course and gave it its controversial title. You're causing trouble everywhere. Everywhere I look, uh, people are discussing you and you, uh, you upset a lot of people. Welcome to the program. Thank you for coming on. The first class was yesterday. Two campus police officers were there to guard the class. How did it go? It went really well, you know. Um, it was just like the first day in most of my classes. We uh, basically went over the syllabus. Um, I did a, I explained to students just briefly uh, about the reasons why the police were present, put everybody in the class at ease, and then we proceeded to go over the syllabus, yeah. discuss the nature of the course, the assignments, the expectations, um, and the readings that would be assigned, and students selected groups that they would be in. And that was about it for the first day. Calling the class white racism turned out to be very controversial. Why not just call the class racism? 
Well, that wouldn't be uh, precise and it wouldn't be candid enough. Um, the term white racism is the language of the literature. Uh, there's scholarly books with the title, uh, journal articles with the title. I've used the, the term myself in my own writing and a course by a similar name was taught nearly a quarter of a century ago at the University of Connecticut. And so I thought at this point in my career and given the nature of our political climate now, it was necessary to, to give it an apt and appropriate title. And that, so that's what I did. The course description says, uh, the class will discuss ways to challenge white supremacy and examine ideologies, laws, policy, and practices in this country that have allowed white racial domination over those racialized as non-white. What kind of material will be covered? I mean, give us some examples of, of that. Well, the, the course will begin uh, in earnest tomorrow morning, and we'll begin with a interrogation of the race concept, its origin, its persistence, its durability, its uh, mutability, its political nature and its consequences. And after that, we will move on. Uh, and next week after that, we will uh, discuss sociological theories of racism and racial ideologies, followed by uh, an exploration of various social institutions where white racism manifests itself, such as the education system, the criminal justice system, the legal system, uh, in areas of housing, uh, retail, uh, even romantic relationships. So if you think about it, and you're really being honest, I mean, most people will say, considering the history of this country, that's not a, that's not a bad, it should be a, not a bad or a controversial class to have if you're doing everything that you say you're doing. Why do people think it's racist? Because I understand you got some, you received some disturbing emails, voicemails, thousands of horrible comments on social media, and so on. Um, Let's, let, me, let me say, one, I, said, one said cancer stage four is what you and your family deserve for spreading hate, lies, and intolerance. Uh, I would ask you to stop using the name Ted in Thornhill. I feel like using its cultural appropriation, change it to Obongo, you racist pig. Um, I bet membership in the Klan is probably skyrocketing because of you. And then on and on and on. Why? why? Well, you know, these folks have always been around and they've been emboldened in the last year and a half to two years by the, the character that currently occupies the White House. And, um, you know, uh, people are conflating racial prejudice with racism. Racial prejudice exists in the ideational realm, in the realm of ideas and thoughts and attitudes and beliefs. And people of all, um, you know, races, people that have been racialized as black, Latino, Asian American, you know, native, uh, white people, all folks can express racial prejudice towards one another. Yeah. However, uh, only one group has uh, developed a system uh, over hundreds of years, and that is that has oppressed other groups, and that is Europeans and their uh, descendants who were racialized as white. Yeah. And so, yeah. Professor Ted Thornhill, thank you so much. We'll check back with you, okay? Okay, thank you for having me, Don. Parents, if you're watching with children, uh, you might want to mute for the next 35 seconds. The Washington Post reported minutes ago that today in the Oval Office, President Trump grew frustrated with lawmakers discussing immigration when they floated restoring protections for immigrants from Haiti, El Salvador, and African countries as part of a bipartisan immigration deal. Here's the moment you want to mute. The Post reports that according to two people briefed in the meeting, the president asked, quote, why are we having all these people from shithole countries come here? Referring to African countries and Haiti, the president then went on to talk about how they needed to bring in more people from places like Norway. This is from Raj Shaw, who is the principal deputy press secretary over here. We can put this up on screen. It's a lengthy statement. Uh, it says certain Washington politicians choose to fight for foreign countries, uh, but President Trump will always fight for the American people. The president will only accept an immigration deal that adequately addresses the visa lottery program and chain migration to programs that hurt our economy and allow terrorists into our country. Like other nations that have merit-based immigration, President Trump is fighting for permanent solutions that make our country stronger by welcoming those who can contribute to our society, grow our uh, economy and assimilate into our great nation. He will always reject temporary weak and dangerous stopgap measures that threaten the lives of hardworking Americans and undercut immigrants who seek a better life in the United States through a legal pathway.